Okay, um, welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna go over an example in which we're gonna size our ideal reactors. We're gonna be sizing our CSTR and a PFR. So before I get started, I want you to pause the video, pause the video, and give this example a read. I hope my handwriting is not too bad. All right, and I hope you guys have read it and now let's go through this so uh, the intern is asked to size a CSTR and a PFR we have a um, liquid phase uh, isomerization reaction I'm just gonna label that A goes to B uh, a chemical engineers favorite reaction and notice how the both the reactants and the products are in liquid phase liquid phase that's going to be important in our analysis that's going to be very important in our analysis we have our first order kinetics this is a first order kinetic model more about that in separate videos we haven't discussed kinetics in detail yet but this is a first order kinetic model and yeah isothermal and isobaric operation keep that in mind all right let's scroll down okay so of, of course we need the process information i did not give this to you guys earlier because um well uh, you have it now okay you have it now so i have my inlet volumetric flow rate i have my inlet volumetric flow rate i have my inlet concentration of species a my rate constant in my kinetics expression and my desired conversion hmm well i'm gonna derive the expressions in terms of x the desired conversion and then after you have it in terms of conversion, after you have the design, after you have the expression, then you just have it's just plug and chug. Okay, assumptions, real quick. Assumptions, steady state, no variation with respect to time, isothermal, all the dt terms are zero, no change in temperature, isobaric, all the dp terms are zero, no pressure drop, no pressure drop. Is that going to be a good assumption? Well, for most liquid phase reactions, for an ideal reactor, that's a good start. But um, if you want to challenge, if you want to challenge this, if you want to challenge this assumption, you have to use some sort of um, some sort of mechanical energy balance, some sort of a friction factor, etc., which we're not going to do in this video. All right, next up, we have constant. We have constant density, so the changes in density are negligible, which means that the changes in volumetric flow rate are also zero the, vo the inlet volumetric flow rate is equal to the outlet volumetric flow rate i hope you guys can follow that so first off let's size our cstr our continuously stirred tank reactor and uh, for those of you let me just draw the uh, schematic here so that you guys can follow along all right my feed is going in at a volumetric flow rate v not going out, going out at the same volumetric flow rate and I need to find out the uh, volume of this vessel. Of course, the uh, system is well mixed. The exit concentrations are going to be the same. But we're not really going to use the uh, concentrations. We're going to, let's see. In our design equation, uh, first off, let's, um, I have a flow rate. Let's see if I can rewrite my flow rate. I'm going to rewrite my flow rate as a concentration multiplied by volume. This is an this is the inlet concentration multiplied by the volumetric flow rate and that should give you the flow rate all right uh, just to make sure everybody is following f a sub zero is equal to inlet volumetric flow rate times inlet concentration just so everybody can follow okay the expression for r a the expression for the reaction oh i have that too vcstr is equal to minus oh this was zero here my mistake my mistake so keep track of your symbols that's going to be very important very important now okay i know let's see i know this i know this i can get this this is my independent variable this is my this is the parameter based on which i'm going to size it i know my rate constant I don't know my um, exit. This is going to be my exit concentration, right? I don't know that. But in the previous video, we discussed that CA for liquids, for liquids, can be written as CA 
not 1 minus x. I hope you guys remember that from the previous video. All right, so we're gonna use that as well. And my final equation comes out to be, let's see, negative v naught c a naught x. So if I were to just go through this real quick, c a naught one minus x, all right. I hope, as you can see, c a naught cancels out and you're left with v, the volume of CSTR is equal to the, the flow rate times the uh, desired conversion. Actually, let me write this. This is the flow rate divided by the rate constant. The flow rate divided by the rate constant, and that is being multiplied by the desired conversion, one minus desired conversion. So now if you, so now after this point, it's just plug and chug, plug and chug. And I want you to evaluate this for a conversion of, I want you to evaluate this for a conversion of 0 0.75 and 0 0.75. 8 and maybe 0 0.9 so i want you to evaluate this well, yourself as a homework you you know the value of inlet volumetric flow rate and you know the value of rate constant you know both of those those have been given in the process info so um yeah let me just highlight this and i'm gonna move forward to my plug flow reactor all right so my design equation as you can immediately see off the back the this is an integral equation i am performing integration whereas above i had a simple algebraic equation Oof! now i have to use calculus for those of you who are wondering who thought that i would never use calc in my engineering degree well well guess what once again fa0 is negative v naught c a naught and i hope you guys remember that the rate expression was written as k times c a naught one minus x. All right, please pause the video and make sure that you understand how I got this expression. And if you guys are not following, I'm just gonna write it here nonetheless. Inlet flow rate times the molar flow rate equals volumetric flow rate multiplied by inlet concentration. And the rate expression was negative kca Hold on, there was a negative here that I did. Oh yeah, sorry about that. This negative goes away after I substitute because there's a negative at the bottom. Okay, okay. So yeah, there's gonna be a plus sign here. Okay, I hope you guys let me know if they, if this gets too confusing. Confusing. I'll try to edit this. All right, um, and this becomes this becomes C A naught one minus X. So the overall equation becomes volume of the pfr is equal to c a naught cancels out negative negative cancels out so v naught and k are constants so you can just pull them out and now it's an integration of one over one minus x all right and you're going to integrate this from zero to x some of you guys remember, some of you guys are smarter than I am and remember how to evaluate this integral. If you don't remember, this integral is actually listed in the appendices, in the appendices of Fogler. So I think it's the first or second appendix, you can go and find it. These integrals are listed there. So you can just copy them and use them as your cheat sheet as you go along. So if you don't remember calculus, it's okay, it's all right. We can still make two all right but i'm gonna be an idiot about it and i'm gonna try to integrate this nonetheless so this becomes a negative natural log expression of one minus x and this goes from zero to x so hopefully if i'm not making an algebraic mistake and hopefully if my signs are correct i'm gonna get something that is logical hopefully i won't end up with a negative volume that's gonna that, 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 that's gonna suck that's not gonna be fun so negative ln one minus x minus minus ln of one and i hope you guys can see that this is just zero and i'm left with volume of pfr is equal to v naught times um v naught over k 
times ln 1 over 1 minus x. All right. All right. So I know my volumetric flow rate. I know my rate constant. And now it's just a plug and chug. Now it's just a plug and chug. So I want you to evaluate. I want you to evaluate the volume at a concentrate at a conversion of 0 0.8, 0 .7, sorry, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. And what I want you to do is compare. Like this is actually your going to be your analysis. Compare the volumes of CSTRs and PFRs because that's going to be that's going to be very important in our next discussion. Oops, V PFRs. I am thinking faster than I am writing. That's not good. All right. Okay. So yeah, this video was basically to walk you through how to size liquid phase reactions. Liquid phase reactions are not that not that big of a deal because um, you can assume isobaric. Your volumetric flow rate is not changing, etc. And obviously, we're designing at steady state. So these assumptions make analysis really easy. All right, CSTR, simple algebraic equation. Try this out. Try this out for the flow rate for the following conversions. And also for the PFR, I hope my integration is correct. Otherwise, that would be a very, I would not make a good impression on you guys. And yeah, uh, try this out. Try this out. And see, um, compare the volume of CSTRs and the volume of PFRs. All right, thank you very much, very much, guys. Thank you for your attention.